We were just telling Dr. Dennis off air that there is a doctor that wants to microneedle his penis on air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I told him he needs to be really unconscious for that. <laughs> I'm not they doing it. They can't numb it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I, I don't even think it's, I mean, a, a spinal block for that, I would imagine would work. But you, I mean, forget about like numbing cream. I don't think it's going to be, uh, is going to be sufficient. I heard that you can microneedle like different body parts. And I don't, yeah. I don't think they're thinking about the penis. No penis. Okay. Yeah, I, I made it this far. What's the weirdest <laughs> kids, place I'm done. that you've ever microneedled anyone in your office? Like the most bizarre place? Um, wow. Um, boobs are nothing crazy. Boobs, but. Boobs for like a, a scar from an implant? Yeah. Well, you know what? For a little bit of, of crepiness, which is now like a big deal. You know? Crepiness. Yeah. What is crepiness? Yeah, you were just telling Lauren Offer. I have yeah. no idea what crepe. Do I have crepiness? Am I in trouble? I don't see it from here at all. What's, Neither what is crepiness? So crepiness is, and this is mostly important, most important on the face. Um, crepiness is like the little bit of crinkling you start to see on on the skin. But it like before you get the wrinkle, it's like a little it looks like um flaky? No, it looks like cigarette paper kind of consistency. It's a little bit really what it is, it's like a little looseness, a little surface looseness to the skin. It's funny because I, I used to have this friend who was 50 years old and she had a disease that I'm not sure what it's called, but it was the disease was loss of collagen. Mm -hmm. So her whole life, she never had collagen mm. and her skin was always and she would complain to me all the time that crepiness that you're talking about. It's kind of like I'll try to show you a picture, but I'm sure people can Google what it looks like. Yeah, I can show you my back of my hand. It looks like if you did this to your skin, like pinch your skin. That little bit of crepiness that you start to see, that's yep. it. That's it. Yep. Like just pinch, like pinch the back of your hand gently. And then you start to see that texture change, that little bit of looseness on the surface. And by the way, that is collagen loss. So elderly people have this. No way. That's the thing. Younger people, that's the first sign of aging. It's the first sign of collagen loss. And it's, the, it's what happens to younger people. I mean, younger people, 25, 26, start to see it. And it's the first sign of losing collagen. And the, the reason that's so important, and, and we're talking about trends, this is the trend. I mean, I think it's a good thing that people are looking at magnifying mirrors and asking for help when they start to see things or at least inquiring about whether this is significant, because that is significant, right? Because it's a, it's a loss of collagen super high up in the skin, actually. It's the layer of collagen between the epidermis and the dermis. It's like the glue that holds them together. So really what crepiness is, is that the top layer of skin is no longer bound to the lower layer and they're moving, they're gliding independent of each other. But that's collagen loss. And then with time, you get fine lines. More than that, you get wrinkles and sagging and laxity. So it's the first, first sign of aging. And that's, I call it the crinkle before the wrinkle. That's what we talk about. Give us tangible, easy three steps that we can do to prevent crepiness. Wait, but before you do that, when you talk about this collagen loss, it sounds like this is not just like maybe a skin issue, but it's an aging issue. Are there things you're saying, you're seeing it in younger people. Are there things that you're seeing people do now that are accelerating collagen loss? This, or? Is, this is the human race. This okay. is how, this is how our skin ages as human beings. And we just start to age in our mid twenties and thirties. We start to see it. And so people know fine lines and wrinkles and, they, and that you can see before and afters about that, but cra crepiness, that crinkling is something that first of all, prevention Sunscreen, obviously, right? Because the sun breaks down collagen. Remember, this is the top layer of collagen in the skin. So the sun, with its intensity, does the most damage at the surface before it actually penetrates deeper. Then it loses more energy, but that's where the damage occurs. So you start to see crepiness first and foremost. Sunscreen prevents that. Other things you can do, I think you do peels. I'm really a big believer. You do vitamin C. Products matter a lot. Products that can help stimulate your collagen and also improve the integrity of your collagen, really good for crepiness. And then in the in procedurally, I think right now the game is all about the microneedling and uh, radio frequency technology. I love the Qterra Secret Pro, big time. Microneedling is different, right, than PRP, or are they the same thing? Totally different. How so? Because first of all, because microneedling, first of all, microneedling is different than what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just microneedling. I'm talking about microneedling laser. So oh. microneedling is like this. It's, it looks like a, a hand piece on a laser that I'm talking about. And it actually, 64 little tiny minuscule needles go into the skin at a depth that we can gauge, that we can you know, decide on what's right for the client. 
And here's the new innovation. So microneedling alone, I was never a super fan of it because that's supposed to stimulate collagen, but I didn't even offer it. You know, I just didn't think it was so helpful. But the new innovation is, the brilliant new step is, you actually can release laser through the opening of the needle Whoa. when it's inside your skin. It's sick. And now when you can do that and you go right to the depth the individual needs based on their body part and their age and the thickness of the skin you're treating, that radio frequency laser is now delivered into the skin, like the middle layer. And the key thing there is that's exactly where the skill set the cells called fibroblasts that make collagen live. So now you have the needle delivering the laser into that layer of skin, stimulate the fibroblast cell, steps up their game, they make more collagen, right? Crepiness gets better, fine lines get better, firming gets, is, is accomplished, and no downtime. Because you, you notice you bypass the top layer of skin, so it's not fraxel, it's not ablative. And I love that. How much is this though? Because this is what people always say, they're like, I can't afford it. What would you recommend? I mean, how much does it cost? Depends on how much you do, and depend, depends on what city you live in. My practice starts at $800 you know? Um, and I think that that is the way to start people with um, crepiness or who wouldn't get a, a jump start on the aging process. And how I mean, often do you have to do it? You do it once. I mean, it's, a, it's usually a series of three treatments, you know, and it's something that- um, But it's, it's nothing like, you have to do like every quarter or every- um, No, no, no. Once, it's, once the collagen is stimulated, it's yours. You don't need to do anything else, right? You might want to do another touch up one treatment in a year or two or three if you need it, but there's no rules. You know, the most important thing is, is that it's non-invasive. So there's no downtime, right? That's super important. And then the results are real. So the post to filler, right? Which is just temporarily, you know, giving you more volume. This is your skin really firming up, really getting more thick, more dense. And that's important. Dr. Dennis, I'm seeing something, you know, I can't help it. I'm seeing that people are using filler thinking it's going to help the crepiness, but what ends up happening is it tightens the skin and brings the crepiness up more. Exactly. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. What, like, we need a name for this. It's like, the, it's like they fill the face to think it's going to fix the crepiness, but they're not actually fixing the problem of the skin before they fill the skin. So it ends up making them look older. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely true. What's the name of that? Um, <laughs> you know what? It's, it's called misguided treatment. Right. You know, it really is. So um, yeah, fillers, I think a, a, a trend of this, this whole overfilling and trying to like plump the skin and stretch it so you get every nook and cranny to come up and smooth out, I think it's been kind of a failure. So I'm really seeing that's a huge trend for me. I think, and if anyone's listening, less filler everywhere. Mm -hmm. I personally think that filler is starting to be a sign of people who are older, not younger. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, it's very youthful. I think if you have a really great injector that's just doing a little bit here and there, great. But the, when their face keeps coming out, 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 and then also the width of the face. Have you noticed that? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So what do you do when someone comes to your practice and they're like, I got totally blotched by this filler. What mm -hmm. do you do? What do you do? Well, you can inject an enzyme and take it down, right? So I'm always undoing a lot of bad work. Um, you can also wait for it to come down naturally. That's another option. Um, but I have never believed, and I always, always did just start with a certain amount of filler, whether it's no matter in the cheeks, even the lips, and then start conservatively, come back in a week, if you think you need more, if we agree you need more, we'll do it. But it's so much easier to do it gradually and really get used to what you look like and make sure it's 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 natural looking rather than just overdoing it. I kind of think that that was always a bad idea. I never did that. Do look I need that. filler anywhere? Not at all. You swear there's nowhere. I would not recommend it at all. I saw you walk in the door, okay. right? When we walked into the studio. And you went like this with your eyes. Like I you did. did. You can't, did, did open. Scan. <laughs> can't <laughs> open. I know. And then, and I said, no filler. No filler. I swear to you, I would tell you. Well, here's the thing about me right now. And I think this is also an important conversation. I'm 20 pounds heavier than normal because I just had a baby. Right. So to put filler in me right now when I'm trying to lose weight is counter 
perspective, right? Correct. Yeah, you have to get back to your baseline. Right. That's the key. You gotta you gotta see what a person really looks like, and you gotta wait. And I doubt very much you're gonna need filler then. But right now, that would be really a bad move. You'd be you'd regret it. Things are already puffy right now, as it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to be putting more puff in my face right now. Agreed. Let me ask you this, this collagen, like, so I'll take like a collagen peptide powder supplement. I'll put it in my coffee in the morning. Is that doing oh, he's much for me? Or no? you. No, I, you know face, this is face, answer. You know, your face is not, he it's does not looking like I'm going to get a good answer You can't eat your collagen. You can't eat your collagen. What about through like meat sources and stuff? God, well, that's amino acids, right? Okay, even, yeah, eating, so eating, talk- even, even eating collagen is just eating, it's going to turn into amino acids, right? Yep. It's going to be broken down. Yep. Like, you know, the brick wall that, that, is collagen in the skin if you eat it, it really turns into like not the wall but the little tiny bricks then it's got to be reassembled by the skin but you can do that by eating like you said meat fish so we just did a whole crazy episode on amino acids and complex amino acids, making sure that you're getting the essentials nice. so you're saying like if you do that you have a greater chance of collagen production right which is why healthy diet is all that's what that's what it takes to really optimize your skin and getting your skin having the sources to to make its own collagen so are you a fan of meat or um, collagen production? Well, here's the thing. You, I'm a fan of protein, right? You don't, right protein. Yeah. Protein. You just need protein. And by the way, if you Google how much protein you need, it, you know what it is? It's like the size of a, a five by seven index card per day, right? It doesn't matter if it's fish or it's poultry or it's, it's and you can also get it in plenty of vegetables. A lot of grains have protein. You're going to eat more of it, but you don't need a lot. Human body's really efficient. So- as long as you get your protein, you're getting your, then the protein is the source of amino acids. And then you make everything from whatever, thyroid hormone to collagen, right? That's what the human body needs. So I'm just always a believer in, my motto is what's good for the heart's good for the skin. Heart healthy diet is also skin healthy diet. You told me, and I've asked you this many times, that across the board, there's two things that everyone should be using if they want to be for preventative. And that is vitamin C and LED light. Yes. Is there anything else that goes in that equation or it's just those two things that you would say for everyone? Well, the sunscreen, right? I mean, sunscreen's key, you know? I mean, if you have to pick two ingredients, I love LED. I really do. I love vitamin C. Um, You know, it wouldn't hurt to do peel pads. It wouldn't hurt to do the retinol. It wouldn't hurt to, you got to use your sunscreen. That's, that's That's not negotiable you know, but in terms of technology and ingredients, I think that, you know, here's what's going on with me in terms of production of vitamin C. Um, I have discovered that when you combine vitamin C with another ingredient called lactic acid, that it takes the, takes vitamin C to the next level in terms of what it can do for your skin. It really can. So there's a lot of vitamin C out there. So did you change your first vitamin C formulation? I did. You did? Oh, because I saw you, like, you know, I'm a big fan of your products, obviously. And I saw that the packaging looked a little different. You changed it. Revamped everything. Oh, wow. So yeah, that's what's really exciting. You know, so when I'm, you know, I do a lot of research. And, um, and, and so um, there, we really found that lactic acid is what makes vitamin C work even better. And the way it does, and this is, there's a lot of science here. But that's we, okay. I like the science. Okay. So bottom line. So um, vitamin C is incredible as an antioxidant, it fortifies your collagen, helps produce collagen, it works on hyperpigmentation. That's why it's up there, it's in my hit parade of ingredients. It is a brilliant gift from nature. However, here's what lactic acid does. It also, lactic acid combined with vitamin C, makes vitamin C get more absorbed, deeper penetrating. Now, the name of the game with vitamin C is to really get it, like laser, like we talked about, it's to get it to the target spot in your skin where it does its magic, where it works. Lactic acid helps vitamin C get into the skin and it makes it stronger. So that's incredible. Now, here's the thing too. Lactic acid, the concentration, for example, one of my products is 15%. I can't go higher. That's a, that's a super strong product. Lactic acid gives you even more benefit. So it helps absorption. The other thing about lactic acid that's a, that I think is amazing is that you see a lot of times like sun damage isn't just fine lines and wrinkles. Sun, a lot of times sun damage actually hurts what's called the moisture barrier of the skin, the top, top, top layer of skin that seals in our moisture, right? Lots of times that's the first to go, which is why people, you know, they'll say, I put on a moisturizer 
and an hour later, I'm dry again. Well, they have part of their sun damage story is that they've lost that moisture barrier. Lactic acid builds back the moisture barrier. So lactic acid is also another ingredient that people should be using along with vitamin C. Big time. That's the whole. And the new products have it in there. It's called vitamin C lactic because that's what is the magic. Look at sticky of, fingers over here. He started he's, his fingers. This is what he does with my products. When you talk about him, he starts sticky fingers starts to come over here. I can I can see I I just well, saw I you. see the, all these new products in the house. I'm like, huh? Like, I don't, you know, no, not, you have been a fan of his vitamin C, though, for ever. I like, think it changed a lot of my skin. Yeah. For sure. The vitamin C has been yeah. a staple in our routine. And that's interesting. I mean, you told me about on the live about lactic acid. What exactly is lactic mm. acid if you were to describe it to a kindergartner? I think the same thing that builds up in your muscles when you get really sore. Yes, it is. Now, but it's 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 an alpha hydroxy acid. Okay. Okay. And that's what it is, right? It's also found in nature. It, 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 it's out there, right? So what lactic acid is, it's a tiny molecule that's a little bit acidic, not crazy, right? And what it does is it actually works with the cells in the skin to make the cells produce something called ceramide, right? Have you heard of ceramide? I have, but I don't know what it means. Ceramide is like one of the most important moisturizing ingredients in products. However, lactic acid gets into the skin and stimulates more ceramide production by the skin. And ceramide is the key ingredient to, the, to a person's own moisture barrier. So instead of putting on ceramide and using a moisturizer, it's actually a way you, to basically get the skin to make more of its own moisture barrier by stimulating the key ingredient it already makes, but needs some help in so doing, right? So to me, what my little motto, what I always tell my patients in the exam room is, it's like the, the adage where, you know, give a person a fish they eat for the day, but teach them how to fish they eat for a lifetime. You're better off giving an ingredient that, that rejuvenates the skin's ability to, to moisturize itself, to, to make its mo own moisture barrier, create it again and again and again daily, than to just keep moisturizing and hope it's going to be sufficient. So it's really an incredible ingredient. And lots of times people have a problem with their moisture barrier. And certainly vitamin C combined with lactic is off the charts in terms of how much better people's skin looks. So it was a breakthrough that we had in our, in our lab. And we did our testing as we always do. Then we tested it on a bunch of people as we always do. Results were so crazy, amazing that we said we just got to pull everything old and re replace it and and, re and revamp it. And so that's the new vitamin C lactic. You did like a 2.0. This is like Steve Jobs with the iPhone. He's like perfecting the iPhone. It's like the, the next version. Yeah. If you, if someone's listening and their budget isn't huge. And let's say they have fine lines, wrinkles, a little bit of hyperpigmentation. Let's say they're 27 years old. What? are the products that you would say would be good for their morning routine? Like what are the essentials like non-negotiable? Well, you know, I think that you got to put a sunscreen on. People think, by the way, that sunscreen and vitamin C might be the same thing. Incredible. But Do not. also the order. Okay. I know. Cleanse. You, I know you taught okay. me the order. Cleanse. Okay. My products. Cleanse. Okay. LED light. You know, meditate incredible. Meditate while you meditate. So Three easy. minutes a day. That's all it takes. I was wondering, I was going to ask you this. My mask goes off after three minutes yeah. and I thought, do I need to keep turning it on? It's your daily dose. Oh, three minutes. Totally. Have it's sex strong. in it. If your husband's a quickie, just put it. Lauren, give me a little credit. Maybe I could get two rounds of the mask. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Kids. Um, so um, yeah, three minutes. Okay. And then, um, well, you know what? Your choice is yours. You can do the alphabet appeal at that point and then you put on the, your vitamin C and then you layer on your sunscreen or mix and match all the above or part of the above. But that's the order. That's the ultimate. And do not skip that vitamin C. Skipping vitamin C is absolutely a mistake. This is You told me skipping vitamin C is like someone who's trying to lose weight and diet. And like, I think you said like skipping protein or something. I forgot yeah, what you said. It's a major mistake. It's a, and anyone, you know, everyone's, everyone listening to you on a regular basis wants healthy, better, younger, perfect, right? Vitamin C is the most important ingredient right now. No question. The key thing though is that lactic acid combined with vitamin C takes it 
like you said, it's the 2.0. It's the next level results. And by the way, you know what? You will see the difference right away too. It's like you put it on and it's, you see the radiance, you see the skin super happy. That's how I refer to it. And then after a week or two, crazy amazing. And truth be told, a lot of times people were putting on other, butter, other vitamin Cs and they're not seeing results. So, and, and, you know, I get this question a lot, like, so how much time do I give another product before I realize this is not cutting it for me? If you don't see the results in like, let's just say tops four weeks, you got to move on. Here's what I see from your vitamin C. It's so weird that you say that sometimes people put moisturizer on and it goes away in 15 minutes. What I see is that I put it on at night. I also put it on in the morning too, but I do put it on at night, mm. mostly like a heavy, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but a heavy load. Yeah. I wake up in the morning and my skin is still moisturized. That's right. And by if the way, I put on your vitamin C, I look like I just got out of it. I'm like dewy all day. I know. Look yeah. at his skin. I hear you. It and looks, does look great. I know Thank skin you. looks Thank good, you. huh? Phenomenal. And by the way, I didn't mean to imply that you only use vitamin C in the morning. If you want to use it at night, you sure can. I do. I, use I do too. Okay. I'll be honest okay? with you. But yeah, of okay. course, I really, here, you got to just find the place in your routine to use your vitamin C lactic. That's the most important thing, be it morning or night. And, and that's why I developed a, a, a lightweight oil-free one. That's a serum moisturizer. You know, if you want to use it in the morning, you want a heavy night cream. We have the vitamin C deep cream. You want like the super, super potent serum. It's the 15% uh, firming bright uh, product. That's, that's gonna, the one I would start with. That's the powerful one. So if you have hyperpigmentation, you have melasma, you know, you want the most, the most production of collagen and firming, that's your serum. That's your go-to. Okay, let's say someone's listening and they're like, Dr. Dennis, I have vitamin C in my routine. What would you tell them that they need to go look for in that vitamin C that is not okay? Like say they have a vitamin C from the drugstore and they're like, I, I got this. Yes. This box is checked. And then you're like, oh my God, you have to avoid blah, 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 blah. I would just say, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in my science and my results. And I would say you got to use vitamin C with lactic. So far, we're the only ones doing that. You know, and that is the key difference now. So you're saying if the vitamin C does not have lactic in it, no it's, one else, not, it's right. not going to be the best. That's why I released the product. That's why I developed it. It was a, it's, it was a miss. No one did it. It was like an alpha, it's like the alpha beta peel. You know, people were not seeing how to really create an at home peel. It has no downtime. That was the breakthrough. Then this is another breakthrough. Oh, just very much along the same lines. He's such an innovator, you guys. You well, really we, are. We were talking about this, you know, right before the show started about how, you know, there's obviously this is a business and there's all the kind of like mechanisms that go into this. But really what you are is you're a creator, you're an inventor, you're a doctor, you're somebody that's in a lab actually formulating and figuring out this kind of stuff. But it's the best part about him, and this is why I've always been so attracted to always interviewing you, is because you're actually getting your hands dirty with the patients every single day. And I mean, getting your hands dirty, I mean, you're in it. You're, you're, you're in the game actually seeing what's going on as opposed to like not seeing patients all the time. So you're seeing all different kinds of skin. You're seeing all different ages. You're seeing trends. You're like in it every day in your practice. Yeah. It's an incredible. And it, I have a little, a charmed existence with my career. Um, and yeah, that's, that is the secret sauce is being a dermatologist and a product formulator. Right. And that's the uniqueness. And it all started by being a skin cancer researcher. I mean, I would never have thought that that training early in my career was going to lead to the formulation of products and seeing patients and picking up skin cancers super early or seeing and recognizing crepiness as an early sign of aging and all that stuff. Um, but it has been that way for me. So Speaking of fortunate. your career as a dermatologist in a, in a um, skin cancer, what is it, a skin cancer, what was it called? Researcher. 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 We were talking in the car. So Lauren, you did the forward of Lauren's book, Get the Fuck Out of the Sun. Right. Um, and it was a phenomenal forward, by the way. It's very nice of you to do that. Such an amazing forward. And um, heartfelt. Heart, very so heartfelt. heartfelt. Very, it was oh, very nice. Nicest, nicer than, teared, any, teared uh, nicer than anything him. Michael's ever written me. I'm yeah, yeah just be, be careful. Not Don't write anything else nice, but that was good. Um, but be, Lauren obviously created a book with a catchy title that she knew was going to grab attention, right? It's mm -hmm. very, it's a loud title. And inevitably we have, you know, there's a segment of, of the population. It's like the sun. I call them the sun warriors, the people that love the sun. They were doing, and I would caveat this by saying, we love the sun. We know it's a critical component of life. We obviously get in the sun. The book was not to say you don't need to have sunlight, but not it was a, everything it, so literal. I think, yeah, the play was, you know, don't lay around baking and tanning beds in the sun all day. And 
I think you got that. But from your perspective, what is with with in mind that obviously we need sun in our life, like what is a healthy dose and what is taking it too far? Because mm. I think there's a time now where people are like, oh, we didn't get enough sun. And then, you know, we were real sick and COVID happened and all that. But where is the balance? I think wear a sunscreen and have a good time. You know, don't get red, don't get pink, right? And if that's at the end of the day, if you're if you're putting a sunscreen and your skin gets red or you get burned, you gotta something's wrong. Either you gotta reapply, you gotta do a strong sunscreen. Or you can't just have carte blanche and be in the sun all you want, despite wearing a sunscreen. But my, I'm, I mean, life's short. You got to live it, right? And it's wonderful to be outdoors in the sun. So if you wear a sunscreen and you, at the end of the day, you're not tan, right? And you're not pink, you've been adequately protected and you get the best of both worlds. So that's, that's sort of how I live my life, you know? And by the way, that's, that is probably sufficient to get vitamin D. That you need uh, the sun activates vitamin D, right? And that's important. And you know, it's it tells you that the, the body means for you to have some sun, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't depend on the sun to activate a crucial vitamin in our bodies, vitamin D, which is as research goes on. By the way, it's incredible how important vitamin D has been shown. It's like talk about anti aging, sure. Vitamin D, like anti cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer disease prevention. You know, it's been, it has been incredibly important. It's so important. I also think taking vitamin D is key, but a little bit of sun with sunscreen, even that you still getting enough sun to, to activate your vitamin D. You don't need a lot. So, um, just that's how I live my life. Just wear sunscreen and don't get pink. I love having, this is weird. I love stimulating my eyeballs with sun in the morning. Like I love going outside and looking at the sun. I feel like it, it does something to my circadian rhythm, whatever you want to call it. But I think it's so important what you said. It's like, I wear the shirt that has the sunscreen protection mm -hmm. and I'll wear a hat if I go to the beach and wear the sunscreen. I think that it's to be preventative when it comes to aging or, or skin cancer. It's, it's important to have the tools in reach. You know what I mean? I do. I agree with you. Um, something that is, I'm really thinking about a lot lately is my hands and my neck. I was getting a facial the other day and, and the facialist Brooke at the road was, was telling me, she's like, yeah, she's like where people see age the most is their hands. And I said, well, what can I do? And she said, every time you're using your products on your face, take it to the tits. We know this, but she said, then you have extra product instead of washing it off. She said, put it on the tops of your hands. And then she said, if you're getting a facial, you might as well bring the facial down to your hands and neck. Mm -hmm. What is your vibe on that? Do you think that the hands is the number one place we show age? Yeah, it's big. We got it and treat and I agree with everything she said. I think that's really, really good. And by the way, you know what's funny is like I I, I like to read um, like some of these historical books about like Estee Lauder, who was a who was an incredible lady. Um and and she was she was like the talk about vibing about you know beauty and skincare. She, that's what she was all about. I mean, she just loved to touch people and and look at their skin and 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 sit down one on one. Um, she's an icon, right? So um, and and talk about using products on your hands. That is an old age. An, an, uh, it's been done for years and years, and sort of it's been forgotten by the younger generation. So absolutely. Put vitamin C on the back of the hands a little bit or your peel pads, put it there, 100%. Moisturize it and then see, the, but, but facials are not anti-aging. Gotta remember that, right? Facials are great for plumping, for cleaning pores, shrinking pores, radiance. But remember, anti-aging to me means collagen production. That's the thing, right? Because what does aging really look like? Fine lines, wrinkles, laxity sagging right that's aging I think so that's a key moment of this show saying that that statement anti-aging is collagen production right it I mean, really a lot of people don't think about it like that 100 percent. so facial little steaming on the back hands beautiful but putting anti-aging ingredients that's the difference and that's sort of why i always talk about moisturizers you know another thing that i believe in firmly that i do differently in the industry is I just don't create moisturizers. I create anti-aging moisturizers. That's why I put my, because you can create a great moisturizer, right? It can, it can hydrate the skin, give the skin beautiful radiance, right? Beautiful hydration levels, right? But 
that's not anti-aging either, right? So I always put in either retinol or vitamin C. So if you, you go know, through your medicine cabinet and looking at your skincare products and maybe they don't have some of these ingredients that, pr- that produce collagen, maybe they shouldn't have the anti-aging label. You know, I think that... Or they shouldn't, maybe I say it in a better way, they shouldn't necessarily be looked at as an anti-aging product. That's how I see it. Yeah. And I think that it's very logical and a simple conclusion. Yeah. You know, firming is different than hydration, right? And that's what sort of happens. People use these words and they don't, they lose their meaning because we use them so much, yep. right? So what you want to do is you want to firm the skin. You literally want to increase the density of skin, which is what I'm looking for, you know, and, and we've proven it. Like the alpha beta peel increases a thing called pro-collagen by over 60%. It's ridiculous. We did, that's the research we did. That's the firming effect. That's what LED does. That's why, the, that's why the LED has to be FDA cleared before you can say that, right? And I, kudos, by the way, I'm a big believer. You know, you can, you, you know, you can find fault with governments and, you know, but the FDA has done a good job protecting the consumer so that the LED device is FDA cleared and I can legally say that it stimulates collagen. So that's anti-aging. What ingredients suck? And when I say suck, I also mean ones that we have to watch out for that actually cause certain cancers. Mm, well, I think, mm, let me tell you something, back to the FDA, that cancer ingredients are screened. And I don't think we in this country are getting exposed to many things to worry about. The big one, um, I still think I really despise is hydroquinone don't like hydroquinone at all. Oh, they tried to put me on that when I had a sun mustache. I believe you. Hydroquinone, you know, by the way, the vitamin C serum, the 15% L-ascorbic serum. I don't have it anymore. It's I we'll use vitamin more. C every day. I don't yeah. have the sun mustache. Anymore. Oh yeah. That is, we, nope, we, did the, we did the head to head and that's another thing. See, we, there's so much research that goes on with these products. And then, you know, they just, what you gotta do is just put them on. That's like, but we do the, the, the back room where I work on them. We compared it to hydroquinone. We did it head to head to uh, that. And I didn't want to release the product until I had an alternative to hydroquinone. And that product that worked on you is working on everybody. And hydroquinone is irritating. Hydroquinone backfires. Hydroquinone causes people to get irritated. Darker skin tones, they, when, you, when, they, when they use hydroquinone because they have a lot of hyperpigmentation issues or olive skin people, then they get a little irritated and boom, they get more pigmentation right back. Also, hydroquinone that I noticed is when I used it the next morning, I would go run errands and then the sun would, would irritate it and make it worse. So the sun activates Correct. it. Correct. Incredible. Terrible. So I'm so the answer to your question, that is like public enemy number one. Also up there, I really don't like I really right now, benzoyl peroxide, I think is also irritating and drying, especially when combined with tretinoin. Where do you find those products? Like, what do you, what do you, a lot of them are prescription, right? Well, tretinoin's prescription and makes people red. And it's been really, people think that's how it's supposed to work. Red skin's a red flag. Um, Free radical generation, anti, it ages the skin. It's ridiculous how people are using it and and getting all kinds of messed up complications, including worse acne, Um, especially if they're not using it every day because they can't. And then the skin just like, they're ping ponging. Acne goes away, acne comes back, you know, back and forth and red and dry. Benzoyl peroxide at certain strengths was prescription. Now it's really available widely over the counter without a prescription. But peroxide, think of what benzoyl peroxide. Let's listen to that. Let's just think about that word, right? What is peroxide? It's the stuff in the brown bottle that fizzles and kills bacteria, yeah. right? Not good skincare, right? Benzoyl peroxide is just a, is a, is a benzoyl molecule combined with peroxide. So you're putting this harsh, caustic, not costly, caustic, right? Irritating, potentially burning of the skin, chemical burns on the skin. And then you put it on, that people are putting it on red, on acne, it causes them to get red. Don't like it. Why are they doing it? Because first of all, it's been embedded for years and years and years, like since the 60s and 70s. That was back in the day, those days, it was a breakthrough medication for breakouts, you know? And now it's just, people have alternatives. And so answer your question, I really think that's a bad, bad ingredient. And now, especially with new, this Aviclear laser for acne, talk about trends. I mean, that has been 
gangbusters on people cured of acne, like results better than Accutane. Do you like Accutane? Accutane, I think, has a place. Yes. Right. So it's like a, a tool if you have to use it. Definitely. It's worked. There are two TikTok trends going on right now. One is called skin cycling. Mm. Is it helpful or hurtful? And that is four night cycle, one night exfoliation, one night retinol, two nights heavy moisture, slugging, repeat. I just don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. What don't you get it? Pick, pick it apart. Pick it apart. Okay. First of all, if you were to really, if you want the best out of your products and your ingredients, products when they're developed are meant to be used every single day. Consistently. And by the way, that's how, I've, that's how I use your products. When I use them, I use them daily. You got to. That's yeah. how it, think about this, right? And, and it's, yeah, it's a big leap to go to something medical, but let's just go because medical makes sense because it's a human body. You take a medication, a person has a thyroid deficiency, a person has diabetes, a person has high blood pressure. They have to take their medication every single day. That's what the body really needs for it to get the best results from a particular ingredient. Same thing for all the ingredients that have been shown to work for whatever purpose you're designing the product. It's been tested and approved for daily use. That's the optimal. It's also like saying, you know what? I'm going to eat well. I'm only going to eat protein twice a week. I'm only going to only eat good food twice a week. I'm only going to see the sun twice a week. I'm only going to take my fish omega twice a week. Yeah. It's like you're not going to get the same benefit. Definitely not. So that's that's number one, right? So that's the so skin. Talk about receptors and it's a whole all that high powered stuff. That's how it's designed to be used on skin every single day. The next thing is that, you know what? Moist, something like moisturizing, there is absolutely no doubt that you got to moisturize every day if you have dry skin. Because first of all, if your skin is dry, it needs to be moisturized every single day. If your skin is dry, not moisturizing your skin every single day to stick to, stick to some sort of cycling um, routine means that your skin is being left out of balance. Hydration is so crucial. Think about hydration. How much water do we need to drink? That's like everyone knows we got to drink water. How can you deny your skin hydration because for the sake of saying, oh, you're gonna, you're, I'm on this new cycling craze. You can't, you can't use a moisturizer uh, just a couple times a week and then say, okay, uh, do this, then don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, repeat, right? You got to hydrate every single day. So if that's what your cycling routine um, recommends, that's illogical. I think that's counterproductive too. So, I'm going to get into skin trends and and like face trends and filler trends in a second. But before I get into that, I just have to ask you, I was going to ask you this off air, but I'm going to ask you on air. A lot of people are dise- um, not dissecting, I- injecting semi-glutathon and um, Ozempin, which is a diabetes insulin to lose weight. I know. This is very popular. I know. It's the rich are doing it. I put that in quotes. Apparently, there's like articles about this. A right. lot of celebrities are doing it. I'm hearing the Wall Street ha- Journal just did a piece on it. Yeah, and I'm and if people are hearing this for the first time, you can you can Google the articles on this, and I'm seeing it all over TikTok too of people losing a lot of weight from this diabetes drug. Yes. I feel like no one's talking about this on the platform and I would love to know your thoughts and maybe you don't have any thoughts on it. I do it. have thoughts. Okay. I do. Because I see a lot of the stuff in my office. Oh, know. I'm sure. I'm on Fifth Avenue, New York City. I mean, I'm going to see it all, right? Okay. So what, it's Ozempic, right? The name of the medicine. And it has become like, you know, it's the new craze because it's, it really does make you lose weight. So um, it's big. It's so big. And really, um, what's happening, for example, trends, you know, people are losing so much weight, their skin is starting to become really lax and flat and flaccid and loose and, and hanging off the bone. Combine that with things like sun, and sun, sun exposure in the past. Combine that with a little bit of hormonal change like perimenopause, right? Where the skin in women is radically changing anyway because the hyaluronic acid levels are dropping precipitously, right? So all those things, now you have radical weight loss and then they're coming in and they want me to fix it and help them through it. And that's when we start to do the microneedling radio frequency laser, which is great for body, but I can't make a dent in someone who has lost 20 pounds and she's gone from 135 to 115 and she's five foot two inches tall, you know, for example, it's just, it's just, and, and 
has had some sun exposure and sun damage, it's really tough. Something's always got to give. That's always how it is, right? You lose so much weight. So you're saying like lose it slower. Yes. Well, and I've told you. In, I just want to know. Everyone probably wants to slower hear what and healthier say. and in a more natural way. But also people have a tendency to, to go overboard. Yeah, there's you no know, way to regulate. They just like they see results like, oh, I'm going to go. This is their dream. Now. You know, the old adage, I'm all, I'm, 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 um, what's the expression? I'm, I'm one, like one virus away from getting down to my ideal body weight. People are going to hate me saying this, but like, I, I just feel like nobody wants to really put in the work and effort. It's just like, just, yeah, they don't want to do it. They just want the quick thing. And they're getting it. And radical weight loss causes skin to sag. No question about it. Excess weight loss causes skin to sag. And so I'm seeing this. There is definitely, you know, you're right. This, this has become a part of our culture and it's being abused. Okay. So it, besides the skin aspect, which in my opinion, I, the skin is the most important to me. Besides the skin aspect, is it safe to be injecting diabetes medicine into you? Well, you know what? I'm going to defer to the doctors prescribing it. Got it. Okay. okay. Because it's a prescription. You know, and there and these are doctors who know the side effects, and they they should know the patient and the medications they're on, and their medical history and all that stuff. So I'm so hoping it's situational. Yes. Okay. Sounds like a little bit of a kind of an also. I had to warning. ask warning, little heads up, everybody. I had to ask you. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about trends when it comes to skin. What are you seeing that's very on the pulse that you think is like a fuck yes, and what are you seeing that you're like? Eh, this trend is not going to be great. Like, for instance, we talked about this on the other podcast, Buckle Fat Removal. You think that that is bad. maybe a trend that's going to be bad in the oh, future. Oh, I can tell you, I really believe in that. I really think that Buckle Fat, um, removing it, is it's hard to be precise. It's hard to get your left side and right side to look the same. So you get asymmetry. And then you're chasing it by trying to do fillers to replace the excess fat you took out in one side and make it even. It's a nightmare. And then you got to repeat the filler every couple months. So that, I think that's a big point that okay. that has been, um, I a think no. that's going to go away. Okay. I really do. Um, I, in terms of other nightmares going on out there, um, honestly, I think the whole invasive laser thing is, is starting to just be on a decline. People are not happy with the results. They don't, they're, they're, you know, consumer satisfaction is something that, is low with these with these things that just burn off your face and in the hopes that everything you know that you don't want goes away and everything that comes back is what you want and the non-invasive stuff i can't say it enough you know the the, the, the non-invasive treatments the althera um this this cutera the, the, the thing i um, i highly recommend now um has been amazing um Another huge big win out there now is the laser for acne. Have you heard about this laser called Avaclear? No. Avaclear, it's 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 brand. I'm doing it in my office. I'm one of the first in America to you to to get the. This is what you product. just mentioned a minute ago. Yeah, right? to, and it's been like it's a laser that can, that can actually cure. It actually, here's what it does. It's like you know how lasers target hair to kill the hair for laser hair removal, or lasers target brown spots, or lasers target blood vessels and sure. redness. The whole point about lasers is being able to target. Your 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 the, the right thing to get you the result. There's now a brand new laser that is able to actually get rid of those unhealthy oil glands. That's its target. That is the source of all acne. Yeah. And now, and that's the breakthrough. So you know, one of the first to do it. It's called Avaclear. Huge, huge breakthrough. And that is slam dunk. That's a real winner. What about ponytail lifts? Um, you know, what am I going to say about that? It's, um, I think it's sort of probably okay in the right hands and the right selected individual. Um, you know, be, but you gotta, you gotta like really know who your, your doctor is. And, and I'm, I think you're, you have to get and, you know, go to someone who's willing to say no and also tell you the alternatives. What are you seeing of people that are taking trends too far, like too much filler, mm. too much cheek filler, too much temple filler? What fillers are you seeing that's just like too much? Um, I'm seeing a lot of cheek fillers to excess. You know, I'm I'm definitely a specialist in lip filler and people come to me and show and they're, you know, they just have not only have their lips been too big, um, it's been filled with the wrong filler. You know, Ooh, what's the right and wrong filler? Well, it depends on the individual, right? Got it. So, but the answer is I personally like Restylane. I also will selectively use 
Juvederm. What did you use on me when you filled my lips in New York? Do you remember or no? I think we use Restylane. Restylane. Yes, okay. I do. I like Restylane a lot. Do you like Restylane Kiss or just plain Restylane? I like Restylane Plain. Okay. I do. Okay. Um, not to bad mouth Restylane Kiss. Um, if it's working for you, great. But you know what? My style, I want I want to, you know, I have to say that I, I'm, I want to shape the lip a certain way. I, I want to hold the mirror up to the, to the patient and say, do you like this? If not, let's go here. Start and stop. And also you elongate sometimes, sometimes you don't elongate. Sometimes you want to really enhance the cupid's bow. Some women who like bigger lips want to get, don't mind it going away. I like it wide. Wide is great for you. Yeah, you, I like you, have wide. Very, you have great cheekbones and it fits your face. And that's the key thing. You have to have, you got to customize the lips so that it matches a, a woman's face. Right. Is there any filler that you're seeing that is actually staying in the person's face for years and years and years and not moving and it's a horrible brand? I know you don't like to call out brands, but is there something we should look for if we're getting filled? I think that I like just in general, you know what, if you do a hyaluronic acid fillers, I think you're okay because you always have that escape hatch by doing the enzyme that can take it down like a house of cards. Boom, gone in 12 hours. I love that, right? Now I do, ha and then, and then among those different fillers, you know, it's nuanced and, you know, it's up to the individual. I personally, I have my, I have my, my, my favorite because that's what I have, you know, like an artist has his favorite paintbrush, you know, or whatever. I have my tools that just get me the results I get and so far so good. Um, but I, what I, but you know, there are people you know, who go to South America, how about people traveling and getting all sorts of crazy stuff injected that's not available here, still happening, you know? Um, don't do that, you know? Um, silicone was a disaster, right? People were putting silicone in their lips, right? Correct. And those, and you can't get it out. That's you know? what Lisa Renna said on Housewives. She like, I think she had to like go in surgically you have and to like, go, yeah. it was a nightmare. It is said. a nightmare. It's horrible. So that's, that is still being done you know, in South American countries. And, you know, it's, it's sort of sold because it's permanent. How great, you know, how you don't never do this again. But it's, it's talk about, you know, the whole thing with fillers, right? Especially the lips, but cheeks and, and, you know, the nasolabial folds and the marionettes. It's all about sculpting and getting it natural. And you got to use the right filler, right density. But it's really not possible to do that with, with things like silicone. Got it. Yeah. I, speaking of lips, want to talk about lip wrinkles. Mm. I've been putting my vitamin C on my lips. I don't know if you should do that. If you're sucking on things, I love to suck on a straw. <laughs> <laughs> I love straws. I love straws. I love big silicone straws. If that, if you're sucking on that, is that going to make, or a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> or anything right is that gonna, you're not a fan of cigarettes is that gonna make your you look older as time goes on and what can we do for skincare for our lips right well first of all you know that anything that any repetitive motion that's really what leads to fine lines and wrinkles like you know people who who grimace a lot get the 11s or who raise their brow a lot get the lines across their forehead and that's what botox does that's what disport does it's going to help reduce the the musculature that leads to those to the deepening of the lines and actually some collagen breakdown, right? And trains you, I feel like subconsciously. Totally does. So, so any repetitive motion with the lips as well, right, is going to be something that will lead to lines there. The thing about cigarette smoking, though, is you got to remember that you're also not only not only puckering your lip to smoke the cigarette, you're also getting the secondhand smoke from your own cigarette onto your skin. Now you talk about, you know, we talked about the vitamin C's, how vitamin C is an antioxidant that kills free radicals. Cigarette smoke, secondhand cigarette smoke is really detrimental to the skin. So not only are you getting collagen breakdown and wrinkles from the repetitive motion of puckering and, and sucking on, on something like a cigarette, but that toxic smoke is also contributing to it. Now, the other thing though, is we all inherit tendencies from our parents, right? So lots of times there are certain parts of the face that just age differently than the rest. And I encourage people to really, to get a jump start on what you're going to look like and sort of take, get attention to it sooner than later, which is advisable. Look to see where, like, you know, the, the parent you, remember, you resemble most is, has aged 
the most. So if you're starting to see like fine lines and wrinkles around the lips is something that, and you resemble your mom and you're, and you're taking after her, that, and you're starting to see it there, that's your destiny. So you, you should be able to get- You can put the vitamin C on the lips. 100%. Right. Oh, definitely. That's why the LED, that's what the LED does too. Yeah, Michael, this mask that I've been wearing every time I meditate, you walk in, you think I'm so funny, you're going to be stealing it. You're going to have all these people that listen to the show analyzing their parents and like, sit down for a second. Let me, let me take a look at your, your wrinkles on your face. Before we go- one thing that I think you and I have done a good job of is manipulating a man into skincare. It's a little bit tougher for a man to get on the skincare train. Mm. I wrote a book or I wrote a chapter in my book called How to Manipulate Your Man into Skincare. And I think that you probably have some genius tips. Mm. What's a product or two they can start with? How do we what's great about your products too, you guys, is they're orange. So they're not like hot pink, right? What's a couple products that you would throw their way? And what's a couple phrases you would say to get them on the skincare board? Okay. Get them on board. The first thing to say is it's easy, right? I mean, that's like, num- that's numero uno. They it have really to, is easy. They have to just like, it can't be complicated, right? I mean, women are just, you know, they'll do routines that, you know, the, the six step, I'm only kidding, but the routines of layering, et cetera, et cetera, all good. Men are not that way, right? Men just want to have it, you know, get it done fast. So first of all, it's quick and easy. That's how I, I would say you have to appeal to them. Um, then you have to get, you have to make sure that it's the products give them results right away, right? Michael's skin is glowing right now. He glowing. looks absolutely. You look in the mirror and you got to say, I'm not imagining this. And then once they see that the, their skin and they like the way they look, done. You accomplish I know the goal. You can go, oh my God, you look so good. You look so good. No, I've I, never okay, seen is, your skin look this, like. And then when you're applying your skincare, it's like, ah. Oh. This is actually the truth. And I wrote it in your book and, it, and it's a credit to you as well, but your products. What she gave me, at the time, I think it was the vitamin C serum and the vitamin C moisturizer and the orange vitamin C. Under eye. Under eye. That was it. Yeah. I had a cleanser too and I had the wipes, but like those are the, and I did those occasionally, but the things that I use regularly, I'm like, okay, I put the serum, then I put the moisturizer and then I put the, the eye. And like instantly the, the bags are away. I'm like face is much brighter, yeah. right? Like I felt better. And I just, you, you see, it, I'm like, okay, like if that's all I have to do, one, two, three every day, just do it when I'm brushing my teeth. He exactly. was using like dandruff shampoo on his face and when now, he met me. Now I won't, <laughs> now that I see the results and now that I have them and now that I do it, like I won't not do it now. Exactly. Like I, feel, I actually feel not normal when I don't do it. It's like if I wouldn't, it's like not brushing your teeth. Right. Vitamin C for men, the okay. vitamin C lactic line is like, like you're saying, so easy, so quick, and beautiful. Results are fantastic. You look younger now than I, years when I saw you in my office. It really. sounds like vitamin C is, we need to like name this episode vitamin C. Vitamin C is the thing, the one that I would start with, and then Dr. Dennis, you can say what you think because you might not agree with me, is I would start with the serum concentrate. It's the 15% vitamin C. And I like it because when I apply it, I instantly see yes. a difference. Right. Vitamin C lactic. That's the difference though. It's gotta be, I mean, gotta put that word in there. Vitamin C lactic. Yes, that's that's the key. Yeah. The, 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 I don't these, think you have that one. These I products one. are really, really, this is, you know, what's amazing to me real quick is that, you know, no different than anything in technology is this, this, the phrase state of the art, right? Everything's advancing, right? You think about how technology is advanced. In a way, skincare is is a te- is technology too. Really, it's it's in a bottle, it's ingredients, but there's technology, and that's what we do. You know, we really research and create new innovative uh, skincare products. And so, the vitamin C lactic is the state of the art for the current best line for vitamin C, which is amazing, but now even better. Yeah, I mean, listen, I know like Lauren's a big draw, but obviously, you mostly come here for me, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Lauren is hoarding these products away. Whoever on your team is listening to this, she is railroading me. Okay. She's taking all of them. She no, doesn't. No, she has some. I don't have worry. no lactic. I'm sitting here. I'm using the old stuff. No, don't do that. Let no, me get, okay. No, I'll get, okay. I'll get you this. I will too. Um, uh, we have a code, code skinny for everyone. I'm going to say, and again, you might not agree with me, but the oil-free moisturizer in the blue tub mm. is something I use every single day and how I use it is I mix it with my foundation CC cream and a beauty blender. Yes. And the way it applies to my skin, it there's nothing like it. That's, it's amazing. Is it the hyaluronic acid in it? It's a hyaluronic acid in it. It's the mixture of other ingredients. I'm a big believer in this synergy concept of cocktailing. There's innovation everywhere. Remember, hyaluronic acid in that product is what's used in filler. 
that's what it is. It gives me like a plump. So if, if you're going to use the code skinny, yes, definitely the vitamin C with lactic, obviously, but also that blue tub. Don't sleep on the blue tub. Can we do a giveaway? Yes. Okay. We're going to give away a bunch of Dr. Dennis Gross's favorites. I guess we'll, I'm going to have to enter the giveaway to yeah. get something. <laughs> we'll definitely <laughs> include the vitamin C products that we talked about and hopefully the LED mask. Is that okay? Yeah. And whatever my you want. favorite blue tub. I also do the peels. The peel. Oh my gosh. All you have to do is follow at Dr. Dennis Gross on Instagram and tell us your favorite part of this episode on my latest Instagram at Lauren Bostick. Dr. Dennis Gross has been on the podcast I the think, most, I think. I think. How many times have you been here? Four? Yeah, I think. Maybe, no, 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 five. Maybe this is five. Well, um, you might have the record. Really? I might could talk to record. him all day. You can come back anytime. No, no, we can you. go anywhere. The next time that I see you, though, I'd love to come to New York and maybe we can get a filler or Botox or yeah, something Yeah, come on. New York. Most people, we meet them one time. We're like, eh, that's enough of you. That's, <laughs> you know, you five times. That might be the record. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You can go anywhere with you. Thanks. Come to New York. Yeah, New York's back. No, we're coming. We're New coming. York's back. We'll actually be there um, in a few weeks, right? Yeah, but he said I don't need filler. So. You know what? I'm going to open one of these over there. But maybe you can do the microneedle thing to me. That is great. Microneedling laser. Yes. Can I, can I get up and go the next day? Yeah, you can. It's you're not going to be weird? Uh, you're a little pink red for like 12 to 24 hours, a little puffy for 12 hours. Put on makeup. You're good to go. Certainly within 24 hours, you're set. I'm gonna book think it we should, we're going to open one of these over there, mm. right? We need it anyway now, a studio over there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we got to figure out the area. I got to talk to you. But I need it to be next to a place that I can frequent. Like it's got to be next to some kind of like a cocktail lounge. Or uh, you're so lucky Sounds I don't live good. there. I would be there once a week. I got to find the what area. What do I need? I know. Can, can yeah. we micro needle my butt? What, what do we need to do? <laughs> they got vacancy in your building? Way upstairs? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Dr. Dennis, tell everyone where to find you, your website, your Instagram, all okay. the things. Okay, at Dr. Dennis Gross Skincare, uh, Dr. Dennis Gross Skincare.com. And we are, uh, my practice is um, DennisGrossMD.com. Um, and so, yeah, we're in Sephora, we're in Nordstrom, we're in all the, you know, these great spas in, uh, around the country. Um, you can find us. So that's, that's where, yeah. Dr. Dennis, the myth, the man, the legend. Thank you, thank you. Come back anytime. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Being here. Really do. <laughs> 